Welcome to Airbnb number two, closest to Pari in central Tuscany. It's infested with cats. No, it's an agriturismo, they call it. It's a working farm, <coughs> but they use the main farmhouse as a hotel. So there's a little cassetta over there. There's a lazy cat here. There's a wife right there. And this is the spot. So we have a little kitchenette here. Coffee's going. Groceries. So we've been doing grocery shopping and eating here just because there's hardly any restaurants anywhere. If anyone can answer why these weird bidets are still popular when the Japanese clearly have it figured out, I'd like to know the answer to that. It is freezing in here all the time. Probably these walls are stone and it's just super damp. But there's the bed and all our crap right there so that's the tour oh yeah coffee's ready we started cooking dinner look at all our fans over here now on the, the right? Stop. Stop. Get out of there. Got a dog to join me on my run today. <laughs> She's fast. Mm. Oh my gosh. My running partner disappeared. Andiamo! She speaks Italian, I guess. Ah, there she is. Sorry. Come on, let's go. Let's go this way. Got it. Photo op. Found this happening mall to get some groceries. Yeah. They are closed. Uh, this is, it took us 40 minutes to get here by car too. It's the closest town. Now we gotta go. Where are we going? Grisetto? It's another 40 minutes. Found a big town. Definitely getting groceries here. Finally a success. We got lotion. <laughs> <laughs> but we were looking for it for like, I don't know. A week? At least a week. We couldn't find it anywhere. This is the first place that had body lotion. Apparently people in Italy don't get dry skin. Now we're gonna get some gelato. Jenny just discovered that some of the airlines we're flying in Indonesia have some subpar safety ratings. The one that we're gonna fly was fifth from the bottom of the worst airlines ever. I'm not thrilled with this idea. <laughs> also, it's freezing in our <laughs> little cottage, which is why Jenny is wearing all her winter gear. Dan says the whole kit and caboodle is here, so. <laughs> you gotta come out of there. Well, this little nugget's trying to get in. Yeah, give me it. Hey, right, there's. Nope, they're gonna get in. <laughs> Gotta turn on my Don't let them pee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know my skirt. <laughs> Just panicked. Great job, driving the speed limit. <laughs> this is my life in Italy. Someone directly on my bumper at all times. And then... So it's uh, 10 a.m. We're gonna go do some wine tasting. The people here don't care what time it is. You drink wine whenever, which I'm totally fine with. So this is Montalcino in the Val d'Orsia behind me. And they're famous for the Sangio, they grow the Sangiovese grape. And what the wine that, that produces is called either a Rosso di Montalcino or the Brunello di Montalcino, depending on how it's aged. That's all I know so far. I'll uh, tell you from here, otherwise we can't hear me. Okay. Uh, consider uh, this is such important time because uh, it's like now is, we are at the end of the alcoholic fermentation. He bought it from here? Oh. Wait, who is Obama? Obama. It's a famous Altera. Okay, so let's go for Altero. Altero actually means self confident in Latin. French oak. Uh, this winery is special, and Montalcino in particular, because they have this natural, the mountains back there, provide a natural wall that stops 
all the bad weather that comes from that direction. Also, because it's the highest altitude winery here, they have a constant breeze and they don't get any fog, so they don't have to worry about mold or any kind of fungus or anything like that. Yeah, so they mostly send Giovese, Cab Sauv, and Petit Verdot, but they do 90,000 90, bottles approximately per year, which is a, he said medium sized winery, but if you look, the large winery is down the way and they do over a million and they sell to like Costco and stuff. Yeah, that's Ban Banfi. Lunchtime. Mm hmm, I'm hungry. Let's go. I'm realizing now where my mom gets her requirement that she has to serve food whenever anyone's drinking because in Italy it seems like whenever we order a glass of wine or anything it comes with this this is an empty tray but it used to be full of snacks. Thanks for all the lasagna mom. <laughs> this place smells amazing. It smells like pecorino. Pecorino. So the owner of the Airbnb is not here yet. We're a bit early but got the welcome committee here. Who's our scrub boy? Who's our scrub boy? Oh, I found some peacocks. Just a few, there's like 50. They're Airbnb. Here. There's no electricity. The cousin's trying to figure out what's going on. But I'm looking for other alternatives. So, we are probably leaving. Hopefully we will be refunded. Or we'll talk to Airbnb about that. Jenny's haggling with Airbnb. No, the guy was like, oh my god, that sounds awful. He's like, I'm gonna take care of this for you. So we're hanging out in Montepulciano waiting for a new Airbnb, and this is a pretty sweet place to have a drink. Yeah, it's kind of cold though. It's kind of freezing. So we're driving here. Babe, you're not gonna say that, are you? <laughs> Jenny's like, Jenny's like, no, I found a good, uh, I found a good place for, for pizza. Pizza Grande. And so we're following the directions, and I'm like, I don't think there's a pizza place around here. Piazza Grande means large square. <laughs> so, this is our emergency Airbnb and it's humongous. It's for like a family of 12. And I guess I should just lock up for this night, for the night on this freaking huge <laughs> Okay, locked. Great. So it's uh, 1.30 in the afternoon. We finally left our house had a busy morning of trying to finish the, the last lost luggage video. Um, we're gonna head up to Montepulciano up there and try and just uh, check out the town and get some stuff to make dinner. Okay, so we are walking into a free underground tour that is inside some building in Montepulciano that leads to a Etruscan tomb, which will come from the Roman times. So this city's been here a long time. We're aging wine in here. We got some barrels. I'll listen to. Cool. So they used to have secret meetings here. The noblemen of the town. Montepulciano. The place was amazing. Self-serve. Lemoncello. Lemoncello, grappa, grappa, wine, some wine, olive oil, and bread. I'm like full, Aries. a little bit buzzed. And we got a free <laughs> museum. Yeah, it was really cool. So we're here in the Piazza Grande, or as Jenny calls it, the big pizza. <laughs> um, main square here in Montepulciano. You can see the palace there. And we found out they're also filming a show called Il Medici, about the Medici family and how they ran Florence in the 1500s. So looks like they're <laughs> covering up I've been really missing sweatpants, and that was the one thing that you talked me out of bringing. So, I'm buying them. Okay, great. Put it in our grocery cart. <laughs> we are halfway through our road trip out of Tuscany. We're headed towards Napoli and Pompeii. This is the last day. Uh, the The drive's been pretty fun. The speed limit's 130 kilometers per hour, so it's like fun for who? Pretty fun to drive up. For you. Uh, everyone's a really good driver though, like. Not for me. You're scared? 
Sometimes. People are actually using the passing lane properly and stuff like that, so that's, that's a change from Seattle. All right, let's go. Okay, the one stop on our road trip today, Pompey. So there's Vesuvius. Blew up in 79 AD. And basically buried this city as it was, which gives us this awesome example of like a Roman city frozen in time. And Jenny's got the audio tour on, so she's gonna give us the fun facts. The sidewalks are a little bit elevated here to keep the plumbing basically hidden. And these little pieces of marble that are in the road is used so that if people are walking at night, they could maybe reflect a candle off of it and get more light. And then during the day, they would flush out the streets with water. And so these stepping stones is like an ancient version of a crosswalk to help get across from one side to the next. Okay, we're walking down Abundanza Street. Jenny says it was a little gritty. Lots of action, I guess. 40 bakeries, 30 brothels. Whoa, that's and almost a one-to-one -one bakery And 130 of bars and stuff. So each one of these is a sh would have been a shop. A brothel or a bakery is a one-to-one -one chance. 50-50 <laughs> shot. Jenny just told me this was a one-way road. You can tell because there's only one stone and all the chariots had standard axle widths. Jenny's been looking for the brothel for like an hour, so we should go find it. This is the bedroom? Yeah. Looks like a nice comfy bed with a rock for a pillow and a rock for a bed. We have tallies. I don't know. And it's like different names and tallies. Oh, there's a tally up there. That's the menu. This theater looks like a Greek theater, because it actually is. It used to be a Greek fort when it was founded back in I don't know, something 400 BC, and you can see 5,000 people in three different seatings based on the price. Come on, Jenny, get your cold bud light. This is the bath complex, or a bath complex. So this was the bath over here. So they had a big water tank outside the city halls that was perched in the highest area of the hill, and then it would flow down but didn't give them great water pressure, so they built these arches and put substations on top of the arches for good water pressure for the neighborhood. And then from the main tank, there's three lines, one for the bathhouses, one for the rich people, and one for the rest of the neighborhood through lead pipes. So what did you think? It was really cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Next up, on Lost Luggage, we ditch the rental car and spend the next week taking in some amazing views and exploring Italy's Amalfi Coast on foot.